Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to the Planescape Torment. Uh, as you may recall from the last episode, we just talked with Ignis, and we did a little bit of a uh, chatting, and right now what we're doing is basically readying ourselves for what is to come. I promise you that I intend to make way to Ravel as quickly as I can now that we are really on the fast track to that. But before we do, there's a couple people that I want to talk to, this being one of them. I am currently back in Sigil by the Mortuary because I've been trying to find this wo this poor woman. You see a haggard woman wrapped in rags. Her hair is disheveled and dirty, and her complexion is extremely dark. Burns cover her arms, and her right hand is a fused lump of flesh. It looks melted like wax exposed to great heat. Reading. Updated my journal. What is it? You want to me? Owen's accent is thick, and you're having difficulty making out what she's saying. You want me to leave? Not leaving the city. So, not leaving the city. So I'm not. I can't. Tried. It's not a city. It's a prison. It's everywhere. 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 The world's there's eyes gleam madly. Plains that be sinking sands. Fields thirsty. Nettles be slight, sightless. Worlds where limbs are given life and hate. Cities of dust. People whose dust whose people are dust and whisper ash the sound without the house without doors the toilet lands the singing winds the singing winds starts to sob quietly but she seems all out of tears and shadows the terrible shadows there be so i've mentioned in the past how these portals can be a dangerous thing this is ingress and she is someone who has walked into a portal and wound up somewhere she didn't want to be where are these places? Where's? Where's them places? <laughs> this all here. Doors, doors. Here to everywhere. Doors. You! You're not... You're not knowing this? She squints at you and her teeth chattering. Tell you I will. Beware every space you walk through or touch in this thrice cursed city. Doors, gates, arches, windows, picture frames, the any... The open mouth of a statue. The spaces between shelves. Beware any space bound on all sides. All these doors to other places. What do you mean? Every door has a key, it does. And with this key, they show their true nature. Then arch becomes a portal. A picture frame. A picture frame becomes a portal. A window becomes a portal. All eager to take you someplace else. They steal you away. Her lump of right hand. And sometimes, what's on the other side takes a part of you as a teeth. Keys. The keys, the keys number as many doors of this city. Each door a key, every key a door. Teeth start chattering again, as if she is cold. And a key is a key is anything. It can be an emotion, an iron nail held between your second and fifth fingers, a thought three to a thought thought three times, then thought once in reverse. Maybe a glass rose. These are all keys that open these Updated doors. my journal. Yes. Yes. Can't leave. Can't leave. How did you get here? Updated my journal. From... Came from a place. From here. Almost a lifetime ago. Hummed a tune by a glade with two dead trees... By a glade with two dead trees that had fallen together. A brilliant door opened in the space. Between the cross trees showed me this city. On the other side, I stepped through. Ended here. Why can't you go back? Tried! <laughs> Tried! All doors here lead to other places! She suddenly grips her melted right hand. Went through thrice ten portals. Some a purpose, some a accident. None of them right. Can't find a way back. There must be a portal that can take you back. Can't even leave here. The square and there, the place of death behind the gate waits for me. She points at the mortuary behind the gate. Can't go anywhere in the city. Can't go anywhere. What do you mean? Anything could be a door. An arch there, any door here. Could be a portal. Don't know the key. Could get us sent to another terrible place. <laughs> Got to stay away. Uh, closed spaces. It could all could be doors. Could have a key on me and not and not know it. You're afraid to go through any door or arch because it might be a portal? She knows what she's chattering. How long have you been afraid of this? Since the last time I walked through the last portal, until the place where my hand. Since then, tenth turn, and I'm in my fourth, fourth tenth. 
turning that now. 30 years. You haven't walked through any door for 30 years. Her vision seems, seems to clear slightly, looking up at you, her teeth still chattering. If you, just, if you got here, there must be a portal that can take you back. It's only a matter of finding it. Be too afraid to walk through any door, that's... There must be a matter of finding it. She smells. Her teeth aren't chattering because she's cold. They are moving around inside her mouth, her gums twisting as the teeth shift about. They rise and recede as you watch, the chattering as they rattle to each other. What? She hisses at you. Only takes one portal. Only you step through an accident to drive you drive the fear into you. I went through thrice ten, lost my hand, burned my flesh, and lost my sense. No more. No more. I'm sorry. If I can find some means to help you, I will. Farewell. Updated my journal. So now we have to help her. We're not helping her. So the more weird. It's raving about doors and keys. Claim the whole city is a series of places. She's dead. If I can find an experienced planeswalker, perhaps he could guide her home. Now, we actually do know someone who is. Adam, were you raised in the hive? Mind your own business, succubus. Have nothing. Very well then. Poor Grace. She tries so hard to get along with Anna. Um, but now, as we are part of the clerk's ward, and well aware of just how badly Ingress needs this, we can take advantage of the fact that we are sensates. Now, I do have a reason for bringing up this quest, and some of you who played this game know exactly what I'm doing. Others are in for a small treat. Because if I recall, we need to speak... There is a specific speaker that talks of the planes. I believe it's this one. Three planes aligned. Yes. Here, stay for a lecture. I am known as Three Planes Aligned, a Githrai scholar. You are here for my lecture. It begins in a few moments. Like, Come on, Chief. Are we really going to stay for this? Just be quiet, Mort. I want to listen for now. It's very low sometime. Today I shall speak of the power of alignment of belief and how they shape the planes. First, I shall explain the concept of alignment. Alignment is a descriptor of one's beliefs and how one acts upon those beliefs. At their core, all creatures predominantly behave in one of three ways, with good in their heart, evil in their heart, or indifference or neutrality in their heart. We predominantly express each of these core behaviors in one of three different ways, in an ordered manner, in a chaotic manner, or in an indifferent, neutral manner. Thus, there are nine core alignments that one is capable of. Keep listening. The nine alignments, then, are lawful good, neutral good, chaotic good, lawful neutral, true neutral, and chaotic neutral, lawful evil, neutral evil, and chaotic evil. I shall speak of the power alignment and the beliefs it engenders. Now from the very deities gain strengths and how and how it can physically affect one's environments. A deity must have worshippers, for it is the faith of subjects that gives them power. The converts and the converts are made and more come to believe in God. The po more power that God receives. Conversely, when no one believes in deity, it withers and dies, joining the corpses of other gods that float on the astral plane. It is thus possible to slay a deity by simply forgetting about them. A much more striking example of the power of alignment and belief, however, can be seen within the sliding of gate towns. First, I would define gate towns. Gate towns are towns such as the Outlands, the largely neutral area which Sigil spins over the center of. They are called gate towns because they are built on around a permanent gate or portal to one of the outer planes. Go oh God. Each of those outer planes has its own alignment. The abyss is chaotic and evil. Bator is lawful and evil. Mechanus is lawful and neutral. Mount Celestia is lawful and good. The outlands, again, are true neutral, leaning to neither law or chaos. 
sliding, occurs when there is a high concentration of belief in an area of differing belief. When this occurs, the area itself will move or slide to a plane that matches the new belief. Now the gate towns usually have a strong belief that matches the outer plane beyond the portal, but the belief is not yet strong enough for the town to slide from the outlands into the outer plane. For example, the town of Ribcage borders the portal to the lawful evil plane of Bator. As expected, residents of Ribcage are largely lawful evil residents, but the entire town's alignment and beliefs are not strong enough, long enough so that Ribcage will slide into Bator. For example, Ribcage might one day see the sudden rise of lawful evil order of a lawful evil order of clerics, promoting their dark beliefs and converting many citizens to worship their lawful evil god. Were this to occur, there would be a good chance the town would slide off the neutral outlands, becoming part of the lawful evil plane of Bator. Those layers of plane, planes may move this way. Thus, many wars are wars of belief and faith by necessity. They are the tools by which territory can be obtained and held. This, then, is the power of alignment. The belief of shape plates, this session has ended. The belief guide your actions and shape plates. Oh, that's not who I want to talk to. Oops. Well, that stuff's important. So we'll talk about that later. Please say, is this the guy I want to talk to? I know it's one of the sensei's. Uh, Chief, you've seen Satch before, right? Uh, talking to you this morning. Loading talking skull who's denying the possibility of a living statue. Well, uh. Got me there, boss. Did you really find that while the clothes they adorn are gray cloth rather than rock, skin is cool and hard as granite? Hmm. Why would someone want the statue? Maybe it's a little too anatomically correct, Chief? It's a rhetorical question mark. I knew that. Besides flesh open and it catches you for some iron rigors, narrowing his cold gray eyes. Forgive me, I only meant to see if you were truly a statue. You are forgiven. However, one feels you lacking patience. Perhaps I have some questions. Hello, my questions. Strong you get the sense this might be just your patience. Keep on waiting. It's past I'll wait for a few more moments, just eyes open. See with cold gray eyes, because your patience is noted. Please, I would speak with you now. It's like, power is no, not another Burke that talks like this. I have questions for you. Ask. What is it you were meditating on when I first found you? It's on the way of stone. The way of stone. A philosophy, a method of combat. With it, Huisai seeks to achieve invulnerability. Vulnerability, you'd be unbeatable in combat. Now, the way is not yet perfect. Huisai will make it so one day. Huisai knows this. Can you tell me what you've discovered so far? No one has asked Huisai to share his knowledge. Huisai shall do this now. Update is my journal. The stone. Oh, my armor class minus one, which is actually a good thing. Let's decrease permanently. That's actually a good thing. Listening to many, many questions, you come to understand a little Kwisai's way of the stone he can teach you. Combat, you'll, you will use it to resist and deflect enemy blows, improving your armor class. So I had other question. Uh, never mind. Farewell. Darn. Huh. I know that... Hmm. I know that it... Wasn't it one of the sensates? Hold on. Uh... uh... Like, I know there is... Ah, uh, I'm in. The, I am in the wrong place. I. 
I am so sorry for wasting everyone's time with that. But we did learn some important stuff while in the Sensei Hall. So, that's good, I guess. I'm gonna do myself a favor. Let's go to the foyer. Rest the party. So I can learn some new magic. And, uh... From here... I can use this... To go back to the Smoldering Corpse Bar. Where I will speak to... One of its tenants. I'm gone. Not this fellow. <laughs> I was hoping I wouldn't have to return here. There's a killer patron. There's a killer patron. The quicks, I think that might be him. I think it is this fellow. You see a short, rotund man with a perplexed expression on his face. From the lines on his loose skin, it looks like it's not too uncommon. Common. He carries a flag and a veil. He carries a flag and a veil and looks like it's in the process of currently being emptied. Rapidly. In between his swallows, he speaks with a gentle voice, so quiet that you can barely hear his words. Hello, traveler. My name is Ilquix. Can I be of some assistance to you? Greetings, I have some questions. Do you want to know, friend? Who exactly are you? I? I am but a humble man with a slight flowery poetical bent and, bent and a tendency towards the supernatural. I regret that I have none of my supplies here, or I should be most, most eager to teach you the ways of power. This is admiring and looks admiring, Grace. And may I compliment you, sir, on your choice of traveling companions? You are obviously a man who understands his needs. Just as obviously you are a man with drive. One must appreciate all the all of all. One must be appreciative of all ambitious men. Ones with a small curtsy. The kind words would melt hearts of any, I am certain, Bill Quicks. And we must always remember that so many people are both more and less than they seem. It would be a shame indeed if all were revealed so quickly. It's a climactic even. What exactly do you mean, Grace? I mean only that I mean that only words spoken in haste are often looked back upon with regret, and that many people possess attributes and even virtues which few others suspect. Too, mi too many leap to, to the ledge of conclusions, and too many never realize that the ledge will crumble under them. Thus, it is that we consider our words before they reveal more about us than we intend. I see. Illiquix, I had some more questions. Do you want to know, friend? Uh, can you tell me about this place? Corpse Tavern. True gentleman. See, so at most about the patrons. Patrons of this place. Oh God. The patrons of this tavern are many and varied. I have spoken with most and find them delightful. The exceptions of the cre those creatures of law. This is towards the pair of Abishai sitting in the corner. They taint the air with their presence, lending an unwholesome stench to an otherwise pleasant environment. I recommend speaking to Bacchus. I understand he requires some aid with a trifling matter. Then we have that O character. I am still trying to understand fully him fully. It is quite under, an undertaking, if I say so myself, that there are folks of interest here. The others, well, perhaps I'm too discriminating. Why do you despise creatures of law? Ah, fine question, my friend. My upbringing has been on the chaotic side of the Great Ring. You may speak to Candrian Canadri Ilborn, a misnomer if I've ever heard one, of the plains. He fancies himself a great plains walker. To return from my digression, I have lived many years with chaos and find it pleasantly agreeable. To me, the taint of law, as in those creatures there, is reprehensible and tyrannical. If I am to be crushed underfoot, I'd rather it be by an individual than a machine that knows nothing of emotion. Truth, I very much agree. I very much agree. There are many who agree with you, but I have some questions. There are many who agree with you. Farewell. So, I've actually figured out who it is I want to talk to now. Candrian. Here we are. Uh, let's zoom in on this fellow, because I can't... What? 
Once again, you are struck with the insubstantial nature of this man's existence, and once again, you are riveted as his. As he turns his pale eyes on you. Have your travels brought forth what you. Not yet, I have some questions for you. Well, hold on here, I'll go back. You see, Suffolk man, gentle, far staring his eyes from his clothing and carries a This on his body. Rope spikes into boxes, empty vials there. Oh, he looks half gone. Literally, there's an inst. It's you, O Seeker. I met a woman named Ingress with very bad teeth. She said that she had come through a portal to, from some world that can be opened by a tune hung near two cross trees. Can you get her home? I know the portal of which you speak, though I have not traveled it these thirty years gone. I will take her home, Seek. Ah, oh, I'll take her home, Seeker. Go tell her to await my arrival. Meet me back here, and I will tell you if I was successful or not. Interesting. So he's been here just as long as she has. Tell her to await my arrival, then come meet me back here. Updated my journal. Farewell. So now, we go to Ingress. Away! Preferably without shadows chasing me. That would be spectacular. So we want to head back to right here. Done. We'll find Ingress panicking up here somewhere. Ah, there she is. Greetings, Ingress. Clock thirty rags, her teeth chattering. She's glancing furtively about her. Eh, you! What is it you want with me now? You want me to leave? Not leaving the city. So I'm not. I can't. I tried. It's not a city. It's a prison everywhere. Ingress, I found someone who can take you back to your home plane. I want to go. I want to leave this place. His name is Kandrian. He should be along shortly to help you. Trust him. All right? Like merely knows quietly, her teeth chattering sort of around. I'll go back and meet Kandrian by the, at the smoldering corpse bar and make sure everything turned out all right. Be strong, Ingress. Updated my journal. So now let's just go this way. Head back to the Smoldering Corpse Bar. And there is a reason why we're helping this woman. Trust me, this isn't entirely out of the kindness of my heart. Right. There is a very special item that you get from this. Andrian stands as you approach him. The Tooth Woman wanted you to have these, he says, hold, holding out his hand. She wanted to express her thanks, even out of out of balance. Even out of balance. Balance book, as it were. And be done and be done with the damned things. The palm of his hand are Ingress's dancing teeth. He smoothly deposits them in your hand. Enjoy them, Seeker. Updated my Farewell. Journal. There was a reason for that. And Mord is not gonna like this. But Ingress's teeth are very special. This is a handful of Ingress's living teeth. Apparently they didn't want to go with her back to, her, to the portal to her home plane. They rattle amongst themselves whenever they are held close together. They remind you of a bunch of creepy ivory hopping bugs. Done, and let's give them to Mort. Hey, hey, come on, hey, hey, come, come on. on. And use. You examine Ingress's teeth. You can't shake the... That's what I really like. I want you to become a magical weapon. Teeth rattle wildly, then suddenly settle down. After a brief moment, they begin to emit a soft magical glow. Done. Now, what's up? Let's check out Mort's new teeth. One point to six crushing plus plus one. Plus one. Themselves. I wonder if I can turn them into piercing. I want you to do piercing damage. Done. Moreover, uh, no inventory. So now they do piercing damage, and I want you to become a more powerful magic weapon. Done. So this is a very special set of teeth. I want you. Oh, I want you to do piercing damage. Done. I just want to make sure that I've got this right. Or the teeth. Okay. 
So what these are, is they are very special teeth, right. meant for Mort, and they are honestly the best weapon he can have in the game, not because of the 1-6 to six damage they do, and not because of their right. being magic, but because these teeth level up with Mort. So we are going to save the game, and let us see now. Have we been at this for a long while? Oh, we sure have. All right. This episode 33. Ingress. Ingress phone home. Thank you guys very much for attending this episode, and I had an alignment change. Interesting. I'm going to keep that in mind. It's the first time I've had that one, too. Thank you guys very much for attending this episode, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.